Hey there, DVA. I hope you guys are doing well wherever you are tonight. I, I just want you to know I'm doing great. I'm so excited tonight for our Thrive Small Groups as we continue our image series. And uh, we're on week three. You may remember last week we talked about the movie Toy Story. I used an analogy about how Andy would put his signature on the feet of his toys. And in the same way, God has given us his signature, his inscription, his mark of ownership. And oftentimes sin tries to distort that. It tries to prevent us from remembering that God has given us this ownership, this inscription, and we are identified as sons and daughters of God. And yet, while sin may try to distort that, God will always bring clarity in reminding us of our value and of our purpose as his children. And I'm excited today. We're going to be looking at the book of Galatians. And Galatians is actually a letter written by Paul to the church in Galatia. And we read of a really interesting circumstance that took place in chapter 5, where Paul is actually addressing some individuals who had been teaching some false doctrine. We see that there was individuals there who were trying to get the church in Galatia to return to it like a works-based salvation. And this was done through the Jewish law. They were ordering people to do certain things, such as become circumcised, to gain salvation and to become true believers. Uh, but Paul recognizes that that is a turn in the wrong direction, and he responds to that uh, in Galatians chapter 5. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read right here at verse 5. It says, this is Paul. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For though, for through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. And so it's interesting to note that there were a lot of outside voices influencing those in the church, and, and, and they were causing a lot of disruption in Galatia. And these outside voices were suggesting that the believers there, they needed to be, and they needed to do things to become true believers. And, and rather than telling them to trust in, in Christ's work, right, Christ already did the work on the cross on their behalf. Instead, they had them try to resort back to former ways. And Paul comes against this teaching to remind the church that Jesus is the only one who came to bring true freedom. And I, I think Paul reminded the church that to compare the personal worth of those there to their personal performance simply brought about alienation from Christ. It separated them from Christ. And we've got to remember, and we, what we know from the passage here is that only faith in Christ expressed through love is the true marker of a believer. And our value as humans, faith expressed through love, faith in Christ. And that's why we got to remember that quote there. It says, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. That's Paul's kind of cap for that passage there. And, and I think the voices in Galatia that influenced the Galatians were really not so different from a lot of the voices that are influencing us. You know, you think about all of the different things that kind of influence our lives and our patterns of thought. You may think about social media or celebrities or influencers or people who are uh, owners of brand names. And these individuals can cause us to think we have to do something. We have to be something. We've got to look a certain way in order to be valued, in order to be noticed by others. And uh, oftentimes, I think these voices cause confusion, just as they did the church in Galatia. And it can prevent us from seeing ourselves the way that God does in reality. And not all of these voices are bad. Hear me. You know, I don't think that social media is always bad. I think oftentimes it's a great tool for staying connected, for sharing the gospel, right? And interacting with people and with friends. But we've got to make sure that the many voices of these individuals, these celebrities maybe, these well-meaning people, the news, influencers, we can't allow them to dictate for us the truths of who we are. And the value that we should be receiving from God. And I, I want to remind you, just as the church in Galatia needed to be taught how to seek freedom in Christ from the different voices that were harmfully infiltrating and influencing their minds, we've got to seek Christ's freedom from all of those things that are causing us to find acceptment or acceptance and freedom elsewhere. In the beginning of the passage, it states this, 
it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Think of it this way. You know, we were not set free to live in bondage. We were not set free to live in bondage. We were set free to live and to act in the freedom that Christ gave us. Not working, not having to strive for what Jesus has already fought the battle for, right? And I, I think the church in Galatia's works-based teaching were never going to provide salvation in the way that they were seeking. And in the same way, our efforts to become worthy, to become accepted by those influencing us or our lives, that can never provide the validation we need. While difficult at times, you know, we've got to be discerning from these voices. We have to look closely to see what is true. And we've got to stand strong in what we know to be true about ourselves from God. I want to finish tonight with this thought from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says this, it reminds us to take every thought captive, take every thought captive and surrender it to God. You see, we've got to surrender these negative thoughts about ourselves. We've got to surrender them to God. These unrealistic expectations from culture, body image, the, the things that people expect from us that we know are not realistic and aren't honoring of God. And, and you know, maybe some of those things are negative thoughts. You know, maybe some of those things are um, sexual addictions or pornography or things that are causing you to fall away from the truth and living in a way that honors God. But ultimately, all these voices that entice us, that can very much become a difficulty in our walk with Christ, we have to remember that those thoughts, we can take them, we can bring them to God, allow those to be taken captive, and actively allow God to remind us who we are as he gives us his peace, as he reminds us that we are daughters and we are sons, uh, woven together, right? The word says we are woven together in our mother's womb. And uh, I want you to be reminded of that. You are destined today. You are loved. You are valued by God. And I want you to remember that your voices that can often become so loud in your head are never to dictate the truth of God and his realistic ideals for your life because of his work on the cross. So you guys, I hope this helps you tonight. I love you. I'll talk to you soon.